What's up everybody, my name is Creator Gator and welcome to my channel. I've been a big fan of dinosaurs for uh, quite some time now and with the Seraphon refresh I've been dying to get these models painted and onto the table. The goal of this series is to produce models that look great on the tabletop but don't take countless hours to complete. Even with recording this footage the actual paint time for this mini was around an hour which I consider to be the sweet spot for time versus quality ratio. Keep that in mind while you're watching and know that you can always add additional steps like edge highlighting, dry brushing, shading, and any additional details if you want, and this can either be a completed mini or a great starting point depending on your personal preference. Without any more delay, let's hop right into it. Unlike most of my speed paint tutorials, I primed in a light gray first, then did a white from above. The reason being that many reptiles have a light underbelly, and I wanted to mimic that effect. If I did a traditional zenithal prime, then the underside would be too dark and washed out, especially with using light paints like Pallid Bone. Speaking of Pallid Bone, it's one of my favorite colors and it's extremely versatile. When painting these models, it's best to think of them in sections. The chest and the tail are one big section, and I'm going to get a decent amount of paint on my brush and start at the neck, letting the paint flow down and me guiding that flow to all parts of our first section. When I go to paint the tail, I initially have too much paint on my brush, so I deposit some of it on the next section of the tail. You can see how the paint starts flowing into the, its scales and around the ropes. That's the main reason I'm starting with Pallet Bone. Because it's a light paint, it will be covered up by the other colors, saving us important time. I try to get the tip of my brush right up against the scales that divide the section of the tail and the back scales. This helps the paint flow into the crevices and makes sure we don't miss anything. That is the main downside of priming with light gray or white. Every section of the mini has to be covered with paint in order to hide the white. You can see the pallid bone is going into the scales via a capillary effect. This isn't an issue for us since we're going to be painting over the scales with a dark color. This is definitely something to remember though when you're using speed paint on scales. The flow is a feature, not a bug, but you do have to be aware of how much the paint is going to flow. The more paint on your brush, the more it's going to flow. Our next color is a mix of one part absolution green, two parts magic blue, and two parts speed paint medium. I choose these colors because they were in the Speed Paint 1.0 set and made a nice dark teal color, but you can pick any color you want for the main body. I do suggest thinning it down with medium and not water, because water will flow more easily and be more difficult to control. But it is important to thin this paint in order to give the skin a different color than the scales. Again we're going to be working in sections. I treat the back, head, tail, each leg, and arm as their own section. The model helps us out here by having decorations like ropes and armbands which cut the bigger sections into smaller sections. With speed paint it's best to paint an entire section like the foot below the ankle band at the same time in order to reduce the chance of the color drying at separate times and not looking uniform. With speed paint when bringing one color to touch the previous color it's important to make sure the previous color is completely dry so the colors don't bleed together and it's best to have a small amount on your brush. This gives you lots of control and lets you hit every section easily. For tough sections like between these ropes, get a drop of speed paint on the brush and deposit it between the ropes. Don't be too worried about getting on the ropes, we'll be cleaning that up later. One of the most important things to think about when speed painting is knowing what will be visible on the table. These ropes are hard to reach and won't be visible from above, so if you want to just paint over them with the main color, nobody would know. Also take advantage of things like this foot touching the base. We know we're going to paint the base later so we don't have to be neat when painting the foot. This helps us save valuable time. While our first coat dries, we can move on to our next color, Princess Pink. We coat the whole mouth, including the teeth and the tongue, making sure to get all the gums and the skin in the corner of the mouth. It's important to be rinsing off your brush between colors, but also when your brush runs dry. This helps keep the brush from becoming stiff. After rinsing, you want the brush to be moist, but not drenched. You can feel this by running the brush on your skin. If the brush is too dry, it will absorb your speed paint, drawing it into the handle. If your brush is too wet, the water will mix with your speed paint and make it runny. This is very much a feel that you'll get with just more reps of using speed paint. The next step is one of the few second coats we'll be doing in this tutorial. A second coat of the same mixture of the main color applied to the head, back, and tail will give a slightly different color on the scales versus the skin. While the main color is back on our brush, we can go around and check for any spots that we missed during the first coat, as well as clean up some sections that touch different colors like the mouth. The next color is Gravelord Grey, which is a pretty universal grey that I use for rocks and stone. I apply it generously to the tactical rock, being sure to brush up against the edge of the warrior's foot. Again, I'm going to paint over the root, which will save us time and also ensure that every bit is covered with paint. I also use grey for the stone handles and the blade of the spear. Painting each section which shares the same paint color helps us save time. 
I initially have too much paint on my brush when I paint the blade, so I dry off my brush on a paper towel and come back and dab away the excess paint. Be careful that you don't make your brush too dry because you could have removed too much paint. You want to do this process immediately when you realize you have too much paint. If you wait too long, it could start to coffee stain. The next paint I'm going to use is Ruddy Fur. I'm using this on all the armor pieces and the shield. Of course, you can use any color you want. My Seraphon are totem carvers, which inhabit a tropical island which grows extremely strong wood. This wood is also very buoyant, so their armor and shields double as flotation devices. Ruddy Fur is another light color, which means we have to be careful how it runs. Light colors dry very quickly and can't be touched up after it's applied, so the first and only coat is very important. It's best to trace the lines in the shield and the armor, letting the color run into the recesses, getting us that great one coat shade look. Speed paint doesn't excel at flat surfaces, so you want to coat the whole flat surface quickly in order to avoid coffee staining and pooling. The spear is also a large flat surface, so you'll want to cover that quickly. When I paint the helmet, I cut the left and right into sections because the paint dries so fast. If there's a difference in drying times, it will be less visible if they're on separate sides of the helmet. The next color is blood red. Again, you can use any color you want, but the colors pop best when the accents are on different sides of the color wheel as the main color. When painting the ropes, you want just enough on your brush so that it'll coat the whole rope in one pass, but not too much that it'll flow down onto the scales. It's tricky to get right, but once you do, you can paint all these ropes in one pass. Remember those under ropes that we painted over? You can take blood red and go right over them. The color won't be poppy, but it will still have a visual distinction between the skin and the rope. Not a big fan of how that looks? I have an answer for that, which will save us a lot of time. And that answer is acrylics. I don't use a whole lot of acrylics, but the new Army Painter Fanatic range is fantastic. I'm not sponsored, but it's just the paints that I have and enjoy. Acrylics always can go over dried speed paint and save tons of time by doing the majority of the painting with speed paints, then going back and touching up the details with acrylics. Some of the ropes on the tail that are dark can be brightened up with this acrylic paint as well. The next color is Hoplite Gold, which is easily one of my favorites. It can go over most light colors like ruddy fur and pallid bone with one coat, but does struggle going over strong colors like the teal we made. We'll use this to paint in the pommel of the spear, the spearhead, the decorations hanging off the rope, and the bracelets. As well as some of the decorations on the armor and the face. Next, we'll paint the feathers, and I just used Magic Blue and Orc Green for this. While the paint is drying, I'll paint the base. I use Dryad Brown, but you can use any color. I paint the whole base so that if the sand that I use doesn't cover it all, you won't see the white sticking through. Ideally, you want to push the paint up to the pieces that touch the base, like the foot and the rock, but not cover them. I'll also take this time to paint the root that we painted over on the rock. The hoplite gold is just fine on its own, but it's a little bright for my taste, so I give all the gold a wash with strong tone. For some final touches, I take acrylic mac white and paint the teeth, being careful just to brush the outside edges. For basing, nothing fancy, just a nice kindergarten appetizer. I put globs on the base in hard to reach spots, then use a toothpick and spread it around, making sure to touch the foot and the rock, but not cover it. The model then goes for a dip in a mixture of decorative sand and woodland scenic rocks. I flick the bottom of the base to get rid of any loose sand and push my finger around the base in order to remove any stuck sand. And that's it. Overall, I love using speed paints on these guys because their scales take the paint so well. I'm gonna be covering a lot of other Seraphons soon, including Agridons as well as some other models that I'm painting. Subscribe for more content like this, and like it if you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, and until I see you again, always remember to feed your creative side.